you want to dominate your games like Mikel Arteta inside of FM23? If you do, then do stick around. So guys, it's Josh from FM Scout today, and I'm going to be bringing you the 4-3-3 Mikel Arteta FM23 tactic. And this is a tactic that has been highly requested on my personal channel and also a couple of times on the FM Scout channel. And do you know what? At the moment, the manager's absolutely on flames, isn't he? He's doing really well in the Premier League. And he plays some good stuff. So what I've done is I've tried to replicate it as much as I can. Obviously, it can't be 100% replicated because a few things do have to get tweaked for a general game performance. We've tested with five very different teams. And this time I've paid attention a lot more because I've actually included a couple of teams in the Premier League, especially one, which is more of a relegation side, which a lot of you guys seem to want to see. So let's get into the testing phase of this. But before we do, be sure to leave a like on the video, comment below and do subscribe to the FM Scout YouTube channel. So we're actually going to start things off with the sort of hardest test first and go into the easiest. That's another suggestion which I'm taking into account. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start showing off the Nottingham Forest success story we had, to be fair, because we have actually got Champions League football with Nottingham Forest. Granted, it was very close, but the fact we're even up this end of the table should not be happening at all. We've also managed to win the Carabao Cup against Tottenham. Um, Stats-wise, we did concede a few goals, but it is to be expected with this team. They're not the best, are they? Although inside of FM, they're actually okay. Um, In terms of goals scored, we actually went out and scored 79, which is relatively good, I must say. We've got... Are we only coming in with 34 goals and Lingard contributing with 16 assists and also the highest average match rate? And now this is by far the biggest surprise in the entire testing phase, I've got to say. Um, really, really impressed with how this test actually went. And what we're going to do is we're going to spend a little bit more time looking at some of the stats in this one because it's obviously the, the real key sort of, you know, test that we've done. So we're going to start in the data hub and we're actually going to click on the general performance first. And you can see here that obviously a lot of the games were relatively close, which I did expect it to be with this Mikel Arteta system because it does play some fluid football, but you've also got to have some pretty decent players to be able to play it. And Nottingham do have okay players, but obviously in the Premier League, there's absolutely superior teams compared to Nottingham, no disrespect to them, but 2.08 goals per game and conceded 1.13. So a lot of the games were close, but obviously a lot of the games you were able to seal out and that's without also putting your own twist on it when you need to, you know, making it more defensive here and, you know, sealing out games, etc., etc. But one thing which I'm really impressed with is the pass completion in this as well. 88% with, you know, Players, I mean, one of their best midfield players in Morgan Gibbs-White, by the way, had an incredible season, as we will look at in a minute. But overall, really happy with these stats at the end of the day. Ideally, I always like it when there's an exact sort of goal difference from what you're conceding to what you're scoring. But with Nottingham Forest, I'm 100% going to take this and run with it. But no, as you can see here, with actually some of the key findings, you've got Ronan, um, Renan, sorry, Lodi coming in with the creativity. Again, fullbacks playing quite a crucial role in this system. Um, if we have a little look at Jesse Lingard, for example, um, he's actually performing well above in the key average role compared to the Premier League. As you can see here, this Premier League bit here is a bit in the middle. We reopen that because I've accidentally done that. But overall, this guy actually had quite a good season, to be fair. 82% pass completion, nearly, well... The, it, look, it doesn't look a lot when you say the assist every 90 minutes is 0.4, but it is actually outperforming a lot of players in the Premier League. So it is doing quite well. Progressive passes, just over three per 90 minutes. So overall, is that, and key passes is actually quite good. you got to imagine a key pass can, you know, it means it's going to something. It's a, it's a key pass. So overall, quite creative. Same as Morgan Gibbs-White. But if we actually take a quick look inside of the Premier League, which we can do here, unless I've had a little bit of a brainwave, go into the Nottingham Forest one and we go into this, we go into the Premier Division and then we go into the stats and we go to team overview. Yeah, so here we go. We're not going to be at the top of any of them because obviously we didn't win the league. And traditionally, when you win the league, that's when you see yourself at the top of stuff. But overall, fourth in the clean sheets of Nottingham Forest, which I'm going to take, um, we go, what's the more interesting one? We'll go most goals Ranked third in that one with 79 goals, which is very impressive, finishing over the likes of Manchester United, Brentford, Tottenham, Newcastle and West Ham. Most possession, I'm actually quite impressed. We managed to keep over 50 consistently with this side, so that's good. 
Task completion, also relatively high, getting towards the 90% mark. So very happy with that, that is for certain. Most dribbles made, we don't find ourselves on that one. Or the most tackles one. You just conceded we were going to be on next for the most clean sheets, so that's fair enough. That's quite relatively high as well, to be fair to you. I mean, overall, I think with a team which, by the way, we can quickly look at the team here and look at some of the stats, because this one we are going to break down a bit more. You can see some of the star the star players in this system, but we look down the ability rankings, and it's not awful for FM. Um, there is definitely worse teams you could be. Um, don't mean the Premier Division. Um, have a quick look at the table. Um, Bournemouth, I guess, would be probably a worse team in terms of actual players. But um, overall, this the squad's not awful on FM. They have got some good players. Morgan Gibbs White is one that screams out to me. Um, a very good player on this game. Um, also, obviously, this man here, I mean, putting up the goals, you can't really knock it. Lingard played quite well, 30 years of age. It always, it always shocks me that. But overall, a very good season, and what a way to start the testing. But then go over to Brentford, which you probably guessed, you've probably seen it in purple sort of highlighted text here. And we actually managed to finish third with them. Not such an impressive display in the Cups, but to be honest, the main aim was to try and get them inside of the top seven, and we've done that with flying colours. You know, third place finish. Absolutely incredible. Very similar points to Nottingham Forest. Ivan Tony being the star player, as always, with 44 goals. And Bomo with 16 assists, 67 goals scored, and 38 conceded. If we go into the data hub, it is going to be quite a close sort of stat line, I imagine. Um, so exactly one goal conceded per game, which isn't too bad with this side, considering it's not sort of laid out to be purely a defensive side. And 1.76, so... Quite good, to be fair, with a pass completion of 87.76. So this tactic, obviously, is designed to sort of go out on the front foot. When I say that, I don't mean go out and be all out attack from the rip, but it is designed to obviously have some really elegant play, good pass and play. So when you are playing with a team that, you know, isn't really favourites to, you know, probably even finish inside of the top seven, you are going to see the, the games be quite close. Um now, this doesn't mean you can't win them because, I mean, we have won plenty of games. Obviously, you can see here, finishing inside of, well, the top four on two occasions with two teams which aren't going to get top four 100% in real life. So, very impressed with that. But that is going to be two Premier League teams tested. What we're going to do now is there is another two t um, Premier League teams to, um, to test, by the way, as well. But the first one we're going to do now is in a different league in Spain. Now, don't cheat. Don't cheat, but leave a comment right now what team you think it's going to be. Don't cheat. Well, if you guess correctly, that is going to be Valencia. And I love testing with Valencia because they're never they're not they're not favourites to win, are they, if we're being realistic? But they can always put up a fight if given the right system. And that is exactly what we've done. We managed to finish in second place and also be champions of the Spanish Super Cup versus Barcelona, got to the semi-finals of the Spanish Cup. And do you know what? This team, you know, they've got some Adrian players in the team, obviously one of them being Edison Cavani, but he always seems to put up really good statistics. And I'm really impressed with how this how this is sort of planned out. 27 goals from him, Lino with 11 assists, joint most assists with Justin Clivert. 84 goals scored, ranking us the best in the category, and goals conceded sitting at 25, ranking us the third best. Now, if we go into the data hub quickly, general performance this is a lot better now this is this is a little insight of playing with a slightly better team um with slightly better attacking players um when i say that by the way that's no disrespect to them because to be honest brentford's attack is probably as good as this but obviously they're playing in a much harder division this is just a little insight of what what it's like playing with a decent team in an easier sort of less competitive division now 2.21 goals per game, um, conceded 0.66, absolutely sensational at the back with this tactic, and an 89.69 pass completion. So very, very impressed with that, 100%, and what a season that was. And that leaves us now with two teams to test with, and these two teams, one of them's a powerhouse, and one of them's a strong Premier League side. So I know a lot of you guys, for some reason, don't like to watch these phase or these teams being tested with. But if you do want to see the results for them, then do stick around before you go and watch the tactic. But let's get into the next one, which is going to be with his former side where he learnt his trade, Manchester City. So Manchester City, now, before you say anything, I know obviously they are expected to win. Um, and we definitely done that all right. I wanted to do Man City because obviously that is where Arteta was with Pep. 
And also the other one is going to be Arsenal because he's his current side. That is a pure tradition on this channel when I do the tactics. If we do a manager recreation, we at least use a couple of the teams he has had some involvement with. So, Erling Haaland, the absolute glitch he is, 89 goals. Bernardo Silva with 39 assists. We won the Champions League, the Premier League, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, scoring 121 goals and only conceding 27. Now, this is an insight of what happens when you do use a top team. This tactic can handle pretty much every standard of team that we have used, to be fair. We have used, obviously, underdog teams, which is definitely an underdog team in Nottingham Forest. We've used the likes of Brentford, who are sort of mid-table. We've used teams like Sevilla. I'm not Sevilla, sorry, Valencia, who are... Um, Sort of like what top six type of team. Now we're testing with two powerhouses or Arsenal. What Arsenal technically are a powerhouse in my opinion on this game because their players are ridiculous. But this team is a real, real powerhouse. World class players in every single position. We go into the data hub. Then general performance. This is where it gets outrageous because the stats are incredible. Three point one eight goals per game conceded. Zero point seven. That's exactly what I expect to be seeing from this Manchester City side. Pass completion of 89% practically, 88.95 if you want to get picky. But overall, pretty much a flawless season. And if we go into this Manchester City side, we'll have a quick look. Where is it? Um, go back to the Premier Division again. Go into here. Go into the stats. Team overview. This is what I mean. So this is where the stats will change when you are obviously finishing top of the league, you see yourself a lot more on top in these statistics. Most points per game, most goals, we fund that. Fewer shots against as well. I'm um, quite impressive there. Most shots four, nine, four, five compared to six, nine, one. Um, fewest conceded and most clean sheets. So overall, a fantastic season. And that leaves us with one last team to test with, which is going to be the almighty Gunners. We then go over and obviously test with Arsenal, his current side that he's doing so, so well with top of the Premier League, and that is where we finish. Now, are Arsenal going to win the league in real life? I'm going to let you guys decide that in the comments. For me, I want them to. And this is going to sound really contradicting because I'm actually a United fan. But I can't see United doing it. And I do not want City to keep winning the league. But it's nice to see someone else win it if we can't win it. Obviously, if the miracle does happen, then I'm absolutely thrilled. But I would ideally like to see, you know, City just not winning it again. It's just, you know, not the same thing over and over. But that story aside, let's carry on. So we won the Premier League quite convincingly, to be fair. We also won the Europa League, the FA Cup, and we done that by scoring 108 goals and only conceding 19. So quite an impressive stat line, to be fair. It's going to be Starboy Bako Saka with 42 goals and Odegaard with 27 assists. So Saka actually putting up some very good numbers. And I noticed that quite a lot with this system. The wingers do get heavily involved with the goals as well, not just the assists. So you know, I don't know if the assistant decided to play him up top for a few games or what happened, but this guy got more goals than Jesus. So, I mean, overall, a fantastic season for Bukayo. And if we go into the data hub quickly, general performance, very, I mean, it's really good. We actually, I believe, conceded less with this side than what we did Man City. We scored less as well, but still impressive. 2.84 goals per game, conceded 0.5. So, really happy with how that has lined up. Pass completion still at an all-time high. 89% this time. So very happy with that. And overall, I look over these five saves that we've done, uh, all these five tests that we've done, and I'm happy with every single one of them. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and break down this fantastic Mikel Arteta 433. But before we do, please do leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and please do turn on notifications to the FM Scout channel, because this way you're never going to miss an upload again. So then, guys, this is going to be the Mikel Arteta, or the Arteta's perfect 433 Dutch FM 23. Now, I've done one of these last year on my personal channel, and it is going to look relatively similar because it's the same sort of manager we're building around. There are a few tweaks, however. So we're going to start things off by going right in to the mentality. I do want to say again quickly, if you do want to download this tactic for yourselves, it can be found on the FM Scout channel. But I do appreciate anyone that does stick around to see exactly how this tactic plays and how it is formed. So, a positive mentality. In possession, you want fairly wide. Play out of defence. Pass and directness is going to be set to shorter. Slightly higher tempo with mixed crosses. In transition, counter press, counter, distribute to the centre-backs and take short kicks. Out of possession, you want a standard defensive line. High press line of engagement. Much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution. 
And that is going to be the instructions. Do you know what? There's not too many in terms of like, we have not, we've not really done any of this type of stuff. Um, but it works really well, guys. I did try the work ball into the box because they do play some quite fluid football and usually it does end up being in the box. But for me, it just, you create so much more, you get more shots on goal without it. So that is possibly something you could, ha you could sort of add if you wanted to, but that I'll, I'll keep it as it is because it did do really well, even with the smaller sides. Now we're going to go in from, we'll do goalkeeper to striker. So we're going to start off with sweeper keeper on support. And he is going to be simply told to take more risks. Very basic, very simple. That's exactly what exactly what we need. Going over to the right back, it's going to be a wing back on support. Run wide with the ball and get a further forwards. The left back, a wing back, is going to be on support. Run wide with the ball and get a further forwards. Two centre backs, both ball playing defenders. Obviously, we're a player from the back side. Both on defend, take more risks and hold position. And take more risks and hold position. Now, going over to the free in midfield, obviously the heart of the team. The DM on defensive midfielder, obviously DM on defensive midfielder, a DM on defense, sorry. Shoot less often, dribble less, and hold position. Next to him, we've got a box to box, so crucial in a sort of free, free in midfield system, in my opinion. It's going to be on support and roam from position. Metzala on attack, by far the most attacking midfield player we have to offer. Dribble more. Take more risks, get further forward, stay wider, move into channels and roam from position. On the left-hand side, we have got an inverted winger on attack. Aim the crosses at the centre, stay wider, dribble more, cut inside with the ball and get further forwards. On the right-hand side, we've got an inside forward on attack. Aim the crosses at the centre, stay wider, dribble more, cut inside with the ball, take more risks, cross less often and get further forward. So you can see how attacking these front three really are. And then we have a deep line forward on attack. You could use an advanced sword if you want to go all on out goals, but this is just more of a realistic approach to the Arteta system, in my opinion. On attack, shoot more often, hold up ball, take more risks and move into channels. And that is going to be the tactic pretty much broken down for you guys. Everything that went into making this tactic, I've just said, and like I said, you can download it on the FM Scout website. I had tons of fun making this, so it would really mean a lot if you guys would leave a like on the video and be sure to subscribe. If you want, you know, a tactic made from another manager, then please do leave a, leave a comment, whether that be any manager, to be honest with you, and I'm willing to give it a go as long as it gets enough feedback and everyone's up for it, and I'm more than happy to try and recreate it for you. That is going to be it for me today, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.